Right now to Washington, where lawmakers in the House have approved a bill extending the deadline to apply for a forgivable small business loan through a key coronavirus relief program. In the meantime, President Trump says that he supports another round of direct payments to Americans as the White House and Congress mull a new potential stimulus package to help shore up the economy. But your next guest says it is time to move away from just throwing taxpayer money at the strategy of hiding from the virus. Douglas holtz is the president of the American Action Forum, former director of the CBO, and a well-known guy. And it's great to have you on this morning, Doug. Really good to see you again. Morning, Brian. Uh, what, what do you mean by that? We need to move away from sort of hiding from it. How would you best handle any new round of stimulus? Yeah, I, I think we did something very sensible uh, with the CARES Act and, and spent trillions of dollars so that people could maintain the ties between employers and employees and ride out two and a half months of, of what we hoped were the worst of the virus. But the reality is that the virus is still here and we need to learn to operate the economy in the face of the virus. And I think your poll tells the story. You said 79% of respondents didn't want to go back to the office. You have to have a situation where workers feel comfortable going back to work the workplace has to be safe. Customers have to feel like they can come and, and enjoy the services or the products that you have and, and do that safely. And so we need to focus on the things that will produce that. And uh, if it's PPE, you know, sort of getting everyone masks, or if it's modifying the workplace so that there's social distancing, uh, whatever that may take, that's going to be the key. How do you get people to, to function in the face of the virus and do so safely? Well, I was reading some of the stuff that you posted, always smart as always, Doug, and, and one thing I did not think about, but you brought up, and that's, of course, why we have you on television, because you're smarter than we are, which is <laughs> a lot of companies are not going to have any payroll or income tax liability this year, or, or very diminished. Yeah. Now, they have to submit that, whatever, monthly or quarterly anyway. Your idea would be to reduce their need to do that so they can maintain that much-needed short-term cash flow. Yeah, my thinking is heavily influenced by our experience after the uh, terrorist attacks of 2001. Um, after that, when I was at the White House and the CBO, we saw the economy struggle. And what I think we failed to appreciate is that we were trying to have an economy that could operate in the face of a threat, a terrorist threat. And, and if you think back, we had to do things we'd never done before, like set up the TSA, uh, inspect every cargo container that came in the United States, uh, protect headquarters and other landmark buildings. We spent a lot of money on the security mission. I think we're in the same situation now. We have a threat, uh, it's a virus, and we have to somehow have the economy operate in the presence of that threat. So let's help companies make that adjustment. That's a costly thing for them. If we can yeah. take some other costs off the books by reducing their taxes, uh, that, that would be helpful. So my idea is to reduce the tax they're going to pay, which is the, the, the payroll tax. They're probably not going to have an income tax liability. Let's, let's reduce the payroll taxes uh, for those things they do to modify the workplace or provide equipment so that people can work safely and, and operate safely in that environment. Uh, on the political side, there's a book, by the way, and I don't know the author, so I, I'm just I'm not trying to sell the guy's book, but it was really good. It was called Everybody Lies, and it was about sort of how people tell the truth to Google, <laughs> but they'll lie even when they're polled. What You know, you get a, quote, anonymous poll or survey at home, you know, and people lie even because no one believes anything is actually anonymous. Right now, the polls have Biden up pretty big, but the polls yeah. have Clinton up big, and they had Dukakis up big. And I'm not taking a political right. side, Doug. It could have been the Republicans or Democrats or flip it. Sure. How close do you think this race really is right now? Uh, this race will be decided just as the previous race was by a small number of swing voters in key battleground states. So 14 points in a national poll really doesn't mean anything. Uh, what can you say and do to move those key voters in Ohio and Wisconsin and Michigan, the places where uh, yeah. President Trump was successful in 2016? That's the key. And those voters are still movable. There's, there's no question about that. They're not locked in. Uh, it's a long way to November. And so this race is a lot tighter than it might appear from those national polls. Well, yeah, so I'm actually driving to Wisconsin right after the show. And one of the reasons in 16 that I was sort of out there on Morning Joe, the program, saying, I think Trump's got a chance. People thought I was nuts, not yeah. because I had any skin in the game whatsoever. It's just that my friends in Wisconsin were all like, yeah, I'm switching over because they were labor Democrats. It was, you know, there's sort of two different right. sides to the, to the Democratic story, if you will, the more progressive liberal side and sort of the labor side. You know, the guy that was a steel worker and likes the Packers and whatever, they switched. There's really about 19 counties, from what I can remember, that actually turned the election, if you will. Yep. Do you think those voters will either switch back 
or just maybe not vote? I think the key for the president is that uh, his handling of the, the pandemic, uh, his response to the social unrest, has actually taken some of those swing voters and put them in uh, the Democratic camp. Uh, he has to, to instead be successful, as he was in the past, arguing he's there for jobs in the economy, he's there to make the country safe against China and other threats. Uh, that, that's the key for him. And, and, and to point out that his uh, opponent, Joe Biden, will not be that. And he has to make it a choice between Trump and Biden. Uh, the Biden strategy is real simple, which is let's have it be yeah. a referendum on the president. I'll just hang out in Delaware. You guys think about this. So, um, you know, we're seeing these, these, this conflict of strategies play out right in front of us. Yeah, and Biden, Biden has done, a, you know, he's got to do a good job, I will say, of speaking yeah. to that labor Democrat in Erie, Pennsylvania, and Kent County, Michigan, and Kenosha, Wisconsin. Long way to go, and I've got a long drive after the show, but I'll let you know how it goes, Douglas, <laughs> as I stop and poll yeah. people at gas stations. Well, <laughs> phone in as you <laughs> go. You we, can, we can take a poll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Douglas Holtz, great to have you on Worldwide Exchange, buddy. Thank you very much. Really smart stuff. Thank you. As always.